Hey AP Psychology students, it's Megan with Fiveable. I'm going to be your host, your guide, your teacher this year as we go through uh, AP Psychology together. Today's video is just going to be a broad overview of AP Psychology and kind of what to expect throughout this year with this class and why it all kind of comes together and matters in the end. Before we jump in though to anything super specific, I do want to talk just a little bit about what AP Psychology is. So in AP Psychology, we study the mind, its functions, and how it affects our behaviors and the behaviors of others. So throughout this class, you're going to learn about personality and why people act the way they do, memory and how some of us learn and remember things versus others, cognition, our thought processes, our thinking. You're also going to study research and how psychologists learn the things that they do about the mind and human behavior. And we'll also talk about things like abnormal psychology and different mental disorders and how those are being treated by different mental health professionals. So this is a really broad class with a lot of really great information. And with that kind of broadness, I think there's room for everyone to find something that they can kind of latch onto and enjoy. So I hope that you can find that this year as well. Specifically today, I'm going to talk about the units that are going to be covered throughout AP Psychology and their kind of weight on the AP test. I'll then talk about how all of those units come together, why AP Psychology should matter to you, and then just some basic tips and strategies for success throughout the school year. So unit percentages has a breakdown as follows. Basically, the College Board tells you ahead of time what's going to be on the AP test. So the first unit, History and Approaches, makes up 2-4% to 4 of the AP test. That means on the 100 multiple choice questions, 2-4% to 4 or 2, 3, or 4 questions will most likely be on History and Approaches. Research Methods then makes up 8-10%, to 10 so you can then expect 8-10 to 10 questions about Research Methods. I show you this to kind of help you guide your studying. Not to say that you shouldn't study history and approaches, but just spend your time on the things that are going to be more emphasized on the AP test. You know, if you're coming down to the wire and you can only review a few units, well, I would review the heavy hitters, the 8 to 10 percent units. But in, in reality, you should study all of the units, but just kind of use this as a guide to help you figure out the best way to study and the best way to prepare for the AP test. I also just want to highlight a couple of these units, give you a little more information about what to expect throughout the school year. The bio unit, Biological Basis of Behavior, is a heavy hitter. It's 8 to 10 percent of the AP test. And this is a unit um, that some kids, especially those of you that are really sciencey, might get into. If you've already taken biology, this also might be an easier unit for you. Throughout the unit, you're going to learn about neurons and how they function and neurotransmitters and different hormones in our bodies and, and how they lead us to have certain reactions and act in certain ways. You're also going to learn about very, various body, system, um, body systems, different parts of the brain and how all those different parts function and what they're responsible for. And so this is a really interesting unit, especially for, again, those of you that are very science-minded. Another unit that's a heavy hitter that I want to highlight is the development unit. This is going to be especially interesting for those of you who may be interested in child care or maybe even teaching later on in life. You'll learn why kids act differently. I mean, I'm sure we've all heard little kids say something silly and we think about the way that they think. It just seems so weird to us, but in reality, once you study this unit, you'll learn that kids' brains are a lot different than ours. and so. The, the different behaviors or the silly things that they do are actually quite explainable based on psychology. You'll also learn about yourself and what to anticipate throughout your life in changes regarding both physical changes or personality or other changes to expect and what you, could re, um, what you can expect to remain stable as well throughout your lifetime. The last unit that I want to highlight is social psychology. This tends to be a favorite unit for my students in particular. In this unit, you learn a lot about your social interactions, so how you interact with your peers or your parents. You'll learn, um, those of you who maybe are interested in business and marketing, how different companies use psychology to their advantage to get us to respond to their ads and to respond to their products. And so that might be really beneficial for those of you interested in that career field. Obviously, we're going to spend a lot more time throughout the year highlighting some of these units, but those are just a couple of the big ones that I wanted to just briefly touch on today. 
besides the units and percentages then, how does this all come together? So there's 14 units. Seems like there's a lot of information, which there is. How do we, at the end of the day, put this all together into something that makes sense? Well, I want to start by emphasizing that pretty much everything that we're going to talk about in psychology is going to be complementary, not contradictory. So there's going to be layers to our understanding and what we're doing in um, AP psychology. When we, for example, with the Venn diagram above, um, look at mental health, yeah, we can look at biology because we know that different neurotransmitters and things happening in our brain can influence our mental health, but that doesn't give us the whole picture. So we could also look at the psychological processes behind something like depression and whether a person has coping skills, how do they deal with or think about situations or their self-esteem or their social skills. And that could also give us some information about their mental health. But it still doesn't give us the whole picture. And so when I say that these are complementary, I mean we really can add all of these different layers together and get a whole or complete picture of someone by looking at all of the different factors of psychology. And so we call this the biopsychosocial approach to studying psychology. We take biological factors, psychological factors, social factors, and layer them all together. And then we get that whole picture of understanding someone's mental health. And it doesn't have to just be mental health. Really, anything that we're studying or approaching in psychology, um, intelligence, um, in social psych, why someone acts a certain way, we can look at the biological, the psychological, the social, all of those factors together and get a more complete picture than just looking at one of those on their own. So I really want to encourage you as you go through each unit, even though each unit is kind of a part and individual, think about how that might complement previous units and how you can add that into your understanding of different concepts in psychology to get a broader, more complete picture of whatever it is that you're learning about. Because I think that's going to really help you be successful. Putting it all together then, why does this matter? Why should I care about AP psychology or psychology in general? There's a few things I think that are really important for you to take into this class. First and foremost, you're going to come away with a greater understanding of yourself, your peers, your parents, everyone around you. And I think that's just really beneficial as a teenager, someone who's still developing, um, getting a greater understanding of yourself. So hopefully you find that beneficial. Besides that, there's a lot of career paths that psychology can lead you to. So whether you're interested in biology or neuroscience or sociology or the field of education or statistics or marketing or business management, there's just so many different things that you can do with psychology that I think you'll find something in this class to kind of take with you and guide you in whatever it is you decide to do later on in life. And then the last thing, and probably the most important thing, is in psychology, you are going to learn all about the best ways to learn. And in the memory unit and the other units, are really going to learn about study tips and ways to remember information that is going to be beneficial to you, not just in AP psychology, but in your literature class or your chemistry class later on, you'll remember those tips and those skills and those strategies and take them with you. So even if you have no interest in the field of psychology besides just taking this class, you're still going to take information away from it that's going to impact you later on. And I think that's one of the really great things about AP Psychology. Uh, to end then today, I just want to talk about some basic tips and strategies for studying and being successful in the class. I would really encourage you to practice as much as you can, meaning um, doing multiple choice questions that mimic the AP style questions. Those are going to be one of your best bets for reviewing and um, remembering information for the test. And don't just do the practice questions, but look at the information. What did you get back? Go back and review those things so that you've learned them and don't make the same mistakes twice. So that's why practice, review, repeat. Just keep doing that all year long. Other um, study techniques, I have this little chart up here, but there's you know looking at case studies or doing flashcards or notes or underlining. Whatever works for you really is what you should be doing. Find a strategy that's successful for you and stick with it. Um, and then, you know, adjust or do things differently based on your test scores. Let the kind of, let the class guide you, but also, you know, seek out your teacher or others to help maybe find things that you hadn't thought of as well. Another thing I want to point out are the Quizlets. 
I'm sure you've all used Quizlet before, but the, the account that I would really recommend is called Matop, M-A-T-O-P, and they have created Quizlets for almost all of the AP Psychology textbooks. So if you type in Matop in your textbook, you'll probably find a Quizlet already exists for it, and then you can just click to subscribe, and they have really um, great information. It's made by teachers, so it's accurate, it's relevant, and that's a really great study tool to use as well. The last thing I really want to emphasize is to give the material meaning, and you're going to hear me say this so much this year you're going to get sick of it, but seriously, if you can make a connection to whatever it is that you're learning about, it's not only going to be just meaningful in general to you, but it's going to stick in your memory so much easier. And so I want to encourage you as you go throughout this class to really find something that interests you and really connect with it in meaningful ways because that's how you're going to get the most out of this class and find the most success. Um, in future videos we're going to talk more in depth about how to survive AP Psychology and then as well getting into the actual material and content of the class. So until next time, I will see you then. Thanks for watching this Five Below Review. Be sure to hit subscribe for more AP content and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkFiveAble.